From the Book of Rumi 105 Stories and Fables The Lion, the Wolf, and the Fox A lion, a wolf, and a fox had become hunting partners. The lion was reluctant to be seen with the lowly fox and wolf but had yielded to their company because he thought it was his duty as the king of the prairie to allow them to benefit from his grace. Just as stars receive their light from the sun, the lion felt obliged to be magnanimous with respect to weaker and less worthy animals. Their first hunt together in the high country was successful. Under the lion's tutelage, the trio managed to capture a bull, a mountain goat, and a fat rabbit. With the lion's help, the two smaller animals carried their rich hunt from the mountain down to the prairie, their hunger growing by the minute. The wolf and the fox were too frightened to raise the issue of how the prey should be divided, but deep in their hearts they believed that the mighty lion would be fair in giving them their share. In fact, perhaps he would let them have most of the catch, as he was so magnanimous. The lion, for his part, could sense what his two companions were thinking, but he decided to remain quiet until an opportune moment arose when he would show them who the decision-maker among them was. You lowly beasts, was my precious company not enough for you, thought the lion to himself. How dare you think that you can influence or predict my decisions? Don't you understand that every thought you have, every action you may take, are possible only because of me? While he entertained these thoughts, the lion erupted into laughter, prompting the wolf and the fox into thinking that soon they'd be filling their empty stomachs with their prey. Wolf, called out the lion. Be my agent and divide the game. Be absolutely fair in your allocation. Show me what you're made of, he challenged the wolf. My king, the big bull must be yours as it's the largest catch, declared the wolf, thinking he'd come to the best conclusion. The mountain goat goes to me, as it is smaller and befits my size. The rabbit suffices the fox. You dare speak of yourself in my presence, snapped the lion. Fancying that you even exist while in the company of an unrivaled, majestic king is blasphemy. Come forward quickly, he ordered. As soon as the wolf took his first step, the lion lifted his monstrous paw and ripped his head off, then shredded his body, leaving just a shell. This low-born creature was entirely ruled by his ego. No room for him in my kingdom, announced the lion nobly. Once he was finished with the wolf, the lion turned to the fox. Fox, it's your turn to divide the loot. Hurry up, as I'm feeling puckish. The fox bowed respectfully, swallowing his fear. Your honor, this fat bull is for your delightful breakfast he said with nervous discomfort. The mountain goat will be appropriate for your lunch, and the rabbit will suffice for your delectable supper. Where did you learn how to divide the loot in this manner? Asked the surprised Lion King. From watching the desecrated body of the wolf, your honor. You're a smart fox, the lion admitted. You've been absorbed into your love for me and you've stopped regarding yourself as separate from the object of your love. Now you can only see me while you no longer exist, that's why I will let you have all three catches. Take them and be gone, I'll never hurt you. You may not only have the prey, but I, too, am yours now. One who learns a lesson from watching his friend's mistakes is indeed the wisest one. The fox couldn't believe his luck, silently giving thanks to God that the lion had first chosen the wolf to divide the loot, otherwise, it would have been his dead corpse sprawled over the prairie.